On the way to Rome, checked in at Hotel Milani, just five minutes walk from Roma Termini Station. A very convenient location, and the hotel is fine. We have booked a skip the line tour because all direct tickets were sold out. This ticket has some benefit. You avoid the long queues. We are waiting for our trip just near the Collegium. Our guide George taking us to the Roman Forum first. Rome has the highest concentration of historical, archaeological and architectural heritage in the world called the Eternal City. The Roman Forum was the center of ancient Rome. From Julius Caesar to Augustus to Constantine the Great, Roman emperors ruled from this very place. We are at the newly opened Domus Tiberiana on Palantine Hill. This place was excavated for 50 years. Only in September 2023, it was opened for public. Several emperors and royal families lived here. Oh my God, they had ensuite toilets 2000 years back. Upstairs you see mosaic floors. Look at the stucco work right here. I just yeah, saw this for the first time because it's only been lit up now. Look how beautiful. On the top of this hill, a beautiful garden and great views of the forum. There are nearly 90,000 stone pine trees in Rome. You cannot miss it wherever you go, especially near the ancient Rome area and Bodkis Gallery. You will find the stone pine trees. So nice to look at. Okay. 
on dark nights the sprawling ruins to come back to life Now we are going to Colosseum, the icon of Rome. There are double security checks at the entry. Colosseum came up in place of an artificial lake made by Emperor Nero. The placement of Colosseum here was a conscious attempt to bring public closer after the unpopular Nero's reign. With a sitting of nearly 70,000 people, it was a new spectacle of the Roman Empire. The Colosseum has withstood several earthquakes, two world wars, lots of mutiny, years of disrepair. Marbles have been taken away, still it stands. All the fights took place in the arena. Gladiators lived in the two floors called Hypogen below the arena. Gladiators were slaves from different parts of the empire. There were five types of gladiators. Contrary to meat, gladiators rarely fought each other to death. Gladiators did not fight the animals. Owners of gladiators always wanted them to survive for more fights. Maintenance of gladiators was quite expensive even in those days.
de bus. You either take a metro or bus to reach close to Trevi Fountain, then walk through the lane full of tourists. Ten million tourists visit Rome every year. During holy years, the numbers just double up. About 70% of these are international tourists. The Splendor of Trevi Fountain. It was opened in 1762. Water to the fountain is supplied by an aqueduct which served ancient Rome. One of the most famous fountains in the world. People drop coins in the fountain hoping good luck. An estimated 3000 euros are thrown into the fountain every day. Pantheon is one of the best preserved buildings of Rome. It was first built in 27 BC, reconstructed in about 125 AD. The cylindrical concrete dome is an astonishing piece of work of Roman architecture. The dome is larger than the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. Height of the building is equal to the diameter of the dome. The opening oculus in center of the dome is nearly 9 meters, which is open to sun and rain throughout the year. A drainage system built below the building takes out the rainwater through drainage holes. Vatican City is the smallest independent country in the world. It's a city-state within Rome. In the medieval times, Rome and the Vatican had always been at loggerheads until Mussolini settled it with a clear area marked to the Vatican State in 1929. Vatican has its own airport, its own car registration and even its own currency. It is a completely independent country within Rome. It took around 120 years to build this magnificent basilica. Started in 1506 
and completed in 1626. During the course, several popes and architects of this great project passed away. Before Pope Paul III thrusted the work to Michelangelo. Michelangelo was not willing due to the conflicting interests of the church and the state. As he said, he took up the challenge for the love of God. He was given a free hand to accomplish. By the time Michelangelo passed away, the basilica had taken some shape as per his plan. The then pope decided to continue with Michelangelo's plan and assign the remaining work to be done by his junior. What we see today is all Michelangelo's design and dream. The facade and entry to the Sanctum Sanctorium is only deviation which was added later by architect Carlo Maderno. St. Peter's Basilica is without doubt the grandest building in Christian town. The sheer look and feel of the basilica inside is overwhelming. It is graceful and imposing. Florence is the place where the Renaissance started. Great artists were born in Tuscan area and they all gave their best to the city. The Florence Cathedral has an impeccable dome. It's a giant dome bigger than Pantheon, but it is supported by two layers. The cathedral's exteriors are so exquisite that interiors pale before that. This cathedral is older than St. Peter's Basilica of Rome. We are on the way to Uffizi Gallery, one of the best galleries in the world. Our guide is holding a flag to distinguish from other groups. All group guides are carrying different flags. Florence is the birthplace of great artists. The Colossus among them are Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci. We are waiting for our turn to go in at 2.30 pm. You can enter the gallery only at the time slotted. Uffizi Gallery hosts several masters, most of who were the personal collection of Medici family. This Medici family was one of the wealthiest and most influential families of this region. Florence was the capital of Italy for six years. The Florentine dialect forms 
the base of standard Italian and is used all over the Italy today. Visitors from all over the world come to see David, Michelangelo's finest creation. This marble statue was originally commissioned by the Florence Cathedral for its roof line. When finished, the statue of 17 feet height and 8.5 ton weight, it was an impossible task to lift it to the roof line. So it was decided to place the statue in Plaza Vecchio, which was a public square in 1504. For 370 years, the statue remained there exposed to the vagaries of weather and obviously it was getting damaged. So in 1873, the statue was moved to the Academia Gallery. Since then, it has been moving several places within the gallery, but only for better placement and display. The Academia has several other sculptures by Michelangelo as well as other eminent artists.
could not accommodate a food tour as it is already very long. I have given the details of trip and tips in the description below. Please follow if you plan a trip to Florence and Rome. Thank you for watching. Please also see my other blogs and support and subscribe. Thank you.